way we choose which type of treatment a patient is to use has a lot to do with the patient's medical history and their own personal feeling about the technology that we have. The patient has everything to do with the way we choose our options. Patients have to be personally comfortable with the technologies that are available and they may have moral or ethical reasons why they would prefer one option versus another. And it's our goal as physicians in order to help them achieve a pregnancy really in the kind of fastest and most cost-effective way, but also with a way that is personally appropriate to each case. The important thing to know is that sterility and infertility are not the same thing. So sterility basically means that there's absolutely no chance of pregnancy. Whereas infertility or subfertility really means that there's a lowered chance of success relative to that patient's peer group or patients of the same age. There are only a very few uh, specific cases where the type of treatment is pretty much already decided upon because there are not very many options. And those two instances would be when there are no more eggs remaining and a woman can't possibly become pregnant uh, because she has no eggs of her own to use or if there's an anatomic condition where the fallopian tubes are blocked, which wouldn't allow eggs and sperm to meet or wouldn't allow an embryo to reach the uterus. In the first case, if a woman has no more eggs, for whatever reason, then she would have to opt for egg donation in order to achieve a pregnancy of her own or other alternative ways of building families like adoption. Or in the case of having both tubes blocked, the only real option then is in vitro fertilization because we need to get around those blocked tubes in order to achieve a pregnancy. In an ideal case, we would start with the very simplest, least invasive treatments and use those for a small period of time. And if they were successful, then we'd be finished. And then if they weren't successful, we'd move on to an increasingly more advanced, more invasive procedure. It doesn't really do justice to the patient to tell everyone that they need IVF because some people will be successful with simpler technologies. The timeline for fertility is different depending on the age of the patient. So younger patients have a little bit more luxury in that the fact that they have more time, their success rates aren't largely affected by small increments of time and their chances of having a second pregnancy following the first, their success rates won't have changed very much. But if you take a patient who's in her late 30s or in her 40s, a six month interval actually has a significant impact on the chance of any of the technologies that we have of working. So you might not want to delay the more advanced treatment unless that's what the patient really wants to do. We can look at a per cycle success, what are my chances of conceiving in this cycle? versus a cumulative cycle success, meaning if I do this enough, what are the chances of, of ultimate pregnancy? And it's a very different approach. A good example of the statistical odds and cumulative success is the difference between performing a procedure that has a 10% chance of success four times versus the chance of success when there's a 40% one time. They're not mathematically equivalent. A patient who does one 10% procedure four times only has about a 36% chance of success. And so that, in the long run, is not as effective as one 40% chance of success. However, neither one is a guaranteed outcome. So to the patient, it really depends on their, their the kind of time frame. Do we have four months, to, and is it worth 10% success each month? or? is it better to go to the immediate 40%? And that really will heavily depend on the patient. At RMA, the goal of the physicians here is to achieve pregnancies in the most efficient way possible in the shortest amount of time, but also with an eye towards the patient's ultimate goals, which can include several pregnancies. That timeline makes the importance of choosing the technology really tantamount to success because we're not just concerned with the immediate needs of our patients but with the ultimate goals that they have as well.